Here is a simple yet delicious treat that only requires a few ingredients. A delightful dessert for anyone who loves a soft, chewy bite with a touch of sweetness. To celebrate 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'll be using 1,000 azuki beans to make mochi red bean. Here I have 1,000 azuki beans or red beans that I'll be making the sweet red bean paste filling with, along with the sugar and the water. That's all it needs. This is seven ounces of red beans, which is pretty much a thousand red beans. Don't exactly count it because this is a thousand. Let's just say it's a thousand. Let's go rinse it. We'll start by giving the beans a good rinse to remove any dust or debris. Then I'll transfer the beans into a large pot with a wide surface area to give the beans plenty of room. This way they can spread out and cook evenly with fewer beans stacking on top of each other. It helps everything cook more uniformly which is key for making that perfect smooth paste we're aiming for. I'll add enough water to cover the beans by about an inch or so. Then I'll turn on the heat and bring it to a boil. I always keep my sieve handy because as soon as the water starts boiling, I'm going to remove the pot from the heat and drain the beans. Afterwards, I'll place them right back into the pot. This initial boil is crucial because it helps remove any surface dust that might still be lingering on the beans. By draining the water after the first boil, you're essentially discarding all those impurities, leaving you with much cleaner beans to work with. Besides cleaning the beans, it also helps remove compounds that can cause bitterness and even contribute to bloating during cooking. But that's not all. The first boil also starts to soften the beans, which makes them more receptive to absorbing water while simmering. This prevents any beans from being undercooked or tough. Boiling the beans twice is essential to getting that smooth texture we want in the paste. Once the beans are back in the pot, I'll add fresh water, just enough to cover them again by an inch. I'll bring it back to a boil, and as soon as it starts bubbling, I'll lower the heat to a simmer. Now, this is where patience comes in. I'll let the beans gently simmer for about an hour, keeping an eye on the water level. If the water gets too low, I'll simply add more to keep the beans submerged. After an hour, I'll check on them by mashing a bean, and if it mashes easily, that's my sign the beans are perfectly cooked and ready for the next step. While the beans drain, I'll grab my food processor to blend them into a smooth paste. If you don't have a food processor, no worries. You can mash the beans by hand using a sieve or even a potato masher. While it's running, I'll slowly add the reserved liquid a little at a time until the texture is just right. Not too stiff, but not too watery either. Once the paste is smooth and perfect, I'll transfer it back into the pot for one final step. I'll turn the heat to medium low and start by adding half of my total sugar, in this case, a half cup. I'll stir constantly to make sure the sugar dissolves completely before adding the remaining half cup along with a pinch of salt. From here, it's all about keeping the mixture moving. I'll continue stirring until all the sugar is dissolved and the paste starts to thicken. You'll know it's ready when the paste holds its shape and stays firm on the spatula. That's when we've got the perfect sweet red bean paste. Once it reaches the right consistency, I'll remove it from the heat because it will continue to thicken as it cools. I'll transfer the paste onto a bread pan, spreading it out so it cools evenly. Then I'll pop it into the fridge so it can set. While the paste is cooling, it's time to move on to the mochi dough. In a microwave safe bowl, I'll whisk together the mochiko flour and sugar, making sure everything is combined. Then I'll gradually add water, whisking continuously until the mixture is smooth and lump free. I'll loosely cover the bowl with plastic wrap and microwave it on high for one minute. After that, I'll take it out 
and stir to dough using a wet rubber spatula. Then I'll cover it again and microwave for another minute. I'll give it one more stir and microwave for a final 30 seconds. By now, the dough should be translucent, which means it's perfectly cooked and ready. Next, I'll weigh the mochi dough and divide it into eight equal portions, making sure each piece weighs the same. For the red bean filling, I'll do the same, forming filling balls that weigh just as much as each mochi ball. This way, each mochi has a perfect balance of soft, chewy dough and sweet red bean filling, with both components in equal parts. Now it's time to bring everything together. I'll dust my work surface generously with cornstarch to reduce the sticking. To assemble, I'll start by flattening each mochi ball into a disc. Then place a red bean filling ball right in the center. I'll carefully wrap the mochi dough around the filling, pinching the edges together to seal it completely. Once it's sealed, I'll gently roll the mochi ball in my hand to smooth it out and to form a perfect round shape. To help them keep their shape, I'll place each one in a muffin tin, ensuring they stay nice and round as they set. And there you have it, mochi red bean. The perfect balance of chewy, delicate mochi dough paired with a smooth, sweet red bean filling makes for a truly delightful treat. If you're feeling adventurous, you can experiment with different fillings or add food coloring for some fun variations. You can even take this a step further by dipping these mochi red bean balls in a cornstarch slurry, rolling them in sesame seeds, and deep frying them to make delicious sesame balls. That is it for me in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this video inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video, where I spend seven hours in the kitchen meal prepping 12 meals. See you all in the next one.